Hello and welcome to the Friday report here on the mountain for the 2022 Repco Bathurst 1000. The day started off with the Super 2 qualifying. Now the Ipsos was a split session uh, with the Super 2 and Super 3s. Uh, it was a fairly clean Super 3 session uh, with Kay, Kai Allen um, taking pole with a 207.4. Very strong performance by the 17-year-old. Um, very impressive. Uh, Fraser... Um, before Super 2s went out, Fraser stated that he had steering issues yesterday. Uh, apparently his steering wheel locked uh, in the high speed sections in the, on the circuit, um, which ended up resulting in him in having no green tyre running yesterday, unfortunately. But in saying that, he, now, he does have a green set of tyres available to him, which he did end up using for qualifying. Zach Best uh, decided to adjust his mirror just a little bit more um, by love tapping the wall just slightly at the grate. Uh, but clearly it worked out for him as he was able to get the Super 2 pole uh, with a 205.5. Um, close to the lap record, but not quite. Uh, but unfortunately, he actually ended up hitting the wall at the exit of the chase uh, on his race set of tyres but luckily it didn't matter because there basically wasn't a race and I'll get into that later on. Um, following, following best uh, was Tyler Everingham uh, only two tenths behind and then rounding up the top three was Cameron Hill who was seven tenths behind. Uh, Declan Fraser qualified fifth for that one. Then, after Super 2, came Supercars for their third practice session, the first of two for today, and it was surprisingly dry running. Um, Shane Van Gisbergen did not have a good run whatsoever in this session. Uh, the car looked so uncomfortable to drive. Uh, they couldn't get the balance right. He locked up uh, a few times, and especially one noticeable one was he was on a very good lap, he could have gotten a 204.3, uh, however, he locked the rear, locked the front, sorry, at the final corner, uh, losing eight tenths, and trust me, he was not happy with that. The radio was definitely lit up. Um, Stanaway finally got a proper run in um, after yesterday's problems. Unfortunately, um, only Murphy really was able to cut some laps yesterday. Uh, so today's practice three was dedicated to Richie Stanaway only. Um, he managed to finish 28th in that one. So not too much happened in uh, practice, um, it was, which is good. Uh, Davison was able to top the timesheets with a 204.2, followed by James Moffat in the Monster Energy uh, Mustang, and then followed by Brody Kostecki, uh, who was three tenths behind Davison, uh, and despite all those problems Kisbergen had, he managed to bring it home in tenth position. Then after that came the rain. Uh, the heavens opened up massively. Uh, there was a Toyota eighty six race. Cars were spinning like there's no tomorrow. Uh, and then following that came came practice four for the supercars. And there was lots of standing water, and I mean lots, uh, especially at the awkward s sections of the track. Uh, the first red flag was brought out uh, when Todd Hazelwood crashed at turn two, being trapped in the tyre barriers. Uh, he ended up making it out to qualifying on time. Uh, he ended up actually helping the mechanics fix the car. Um, Cameron Hill lost it entering pit lane, I believe. Um, turns out there was a massive river um, at pit entry. Uh, Jones had a moment at the chase, got stuck in the sand trap, but, uh, kept it off the wall. He had a massive spin, massive spin. That would have been a sketchy moment for him. Uh, Lowndes uh, decided to create a water show on his way to pit lane with all that standing water, um, which was Pretty amazing to see, but it would have been very scary. Probably needed another set of undies for that one. Um, then uh, shortly after that, the second red flag was brought out as Will Brown uh, lost control heading into uh, just before Reed Park and hit the wall hard uh, before he could reach third gear. Um, 
because of that, the session ended prematurely, um, which was a shame to see. But at the end of that, Shane Van Giersbergen um, had a better run this time around, uh, managed to top the timesheets with a 230.2, followed by uh, Feeney and Winkup and Courtney and Goddard rounding up the top three. Um, despite the water show, Lowndes was able to finish 10th and Sanaway, uh, amazingly, finished the session 5th. Then, shortly after practice 4, came the Super, car, uh, Super 2 race, apparently. Um, there was, of course, uh, the, the cars, uh, the race started under safety car, um, about th- on the third lap it began everyone obviously was taking it easy for the first few laps uh pain showed a lot of pace in the wet um however that was prematurely ended when angelo mazuris uh went deep into the tire barrier at turn two there was a lot of damage um hopefully they can bring it out for tomorrow i'm um, glad to see he's all right though um but Unfortunately, uh, that was the, literally the last green lap. On lap five, they had two laps of green running, and that was it. Because the rain wasn't very much a problem, but the fog was insane at Skyline. You couldn't see a thing. Um, so it was probably the best decision by race control there. But it did get better towards the end. Um, but unfortunately, because of time certain, uh, they couldn't continue which is a shame to see because uh, it was definitely probably going to be an exciting race for sure. Um, but uh, in that supposed race, uh, Zach Best supposedly won, followed by Tyler Everingham and Matt Payne. Not too sure if that is actually counts towards the championship or not. Haven't really heard anything about it. So in the meantime, let's just say it does. Um, but hopefully tomorrow they can get a proper run out. Then following that, the fog did die down a little and the supercars went out for their very important qualifying session. Of course, the top 10 um, don't stay where they are. They, of course, take part in the top 10 shootout on Saturday. Um, Wink up. Uh, he, uh, instead of Feeney qualifying, Wink, they, Triple Eight decided for Wink up to qualify car double eight. In qualifying, unfortunately, didn't quite work out anyway. He ended up 14th. Um, But uh, Waters set the pace early with a 226.1. But then Mostert uh, seems to be the driver to beat Um, after that. uh, He showed a lot of pace. Um, But then, of course, Waters decided to, uh, with eight minutes to go, Waters uh, beat Mostert. Must its time uh, with a 223.6, which um, led him to provisional pole, which is which is really uh, cool to see. Um, so qualifying basically was giant waters versus Mostert. Um, Stanaway had a bit of a spin while on a fast lap. Um, he was able to rectify that by uh, being v- very quick in tricky conditions, bringing it car home. Uh, in fifth position, which is amazing to see, considering he doesn't do this full time. Um, Jones and Shaman Gisbergen make contact uh, towards the end, uh, which resulted in Jones hitting hitting the, uh, hard into the wall uh, backwards. So there's a lot of damage there, uh, a lot of repairs to be done. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a investigation happening about that. Um, very interesting there but uh, <clears throat> unfortunately Shane Van Gisbergen was on a good lap there um, until he stumbled with Jones um, so that's all the exciting stuff that happened in qualifying uh, I'm going to run through the top 10 now that will be contesting uh, in the top 10 shootout so um, provisional poll was Cam Waters in the Monster Energy Mustang with the 223.6 followed by uh, oh, Lee Holdsworth who did an incredible performance. Uh, of course, he was the reigning Bathurst champion from last year, um, showing that he could be in for the running uh, for this year's win as well. Um, I guess we'll find out. But an incredible lap by him 
in the Penrite Mustang. Um, Mostert came home in third position, uh, followed by Shane Van Gisbergen, uh, despite that incident there. Richie Stanaway, like I mentioned, fifth position. Incredible performance by him. Um, can't wait to see what he does tomorrow in the shootout. Davison, sixth. Perkat, seventh. Uh, Courtney in eighth. And the two Erebus cars, Brody Kostecki and Will Brown, round up the top ten. So, pretty amazing result for Erebus today. Uh, all three of their cars made it in top ten shootout, which is incredible. And, uh, as I said, Wink Up brought it home in 14th. And Lounds, uh, unfortunately, brought it home in 16th. I would have liked to see him qualify better. Um, so, a bit disappointed there. But the race isn't about the qualifying. We've seen it before. Mostert started last and won it in 2014. It's happened before. So it doesn't matter where you start. It's a long race. But um, these 10 cars, drivers will put on a great show tomorrow. So I can't wait to review that later on and see how you go. Um, my personal pick, I reckon, for the top 10 shootout for tomorrow, I reckon um stanaway is going to put on a show if it's if it's as wet as as today i reckon um stanaway definitely has a has a chance for pole i reckon but i reckon at the end of the day it's going to go down to either gisbergen or waters gisbergen um had very fast sectors but unfortunately wasn't able to pull it together um in that one so uh if you can if you can get the all the sectors right he uh i reckon he's definitely the one to beat if not i think cam waters and shortly behind is Mostert. i reckon so i'm uh, curious to see how it all pans out but we'll have to wait and see of course um tomorrow there's two more supercar practice sessions as well as uh super two's race um can't remember off the top of my head if they have qualifying or not but um of course the day ends with the top 10 shootout so Enjoy the rest of your day and stay tuned for more reports.